Sir, excuse me. You're in the model's dressing room. Uh, yes, I, I know. Yeah, but w wait. <laughs> you don't understand. Our fall collection is out in the showroom. Oh, yes, I've seen it. Very nice. Thank you. So just a minute. If you're one of my shipping clerks, why aren't you working? No, oh, you couldn't. Uh, 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 what can I do for you? Well, I'm supposed to meet someone here. Ah, one of our customers? No, no, no. One of your models, Anne Marie. Anne Marie? This is a seasonal business. Models, you know, they come and they go. I'm not sure which one she is. Oh, well, I'm not so sure myself, but I think she's that girl. <laughs> I feel like a little girl in a candy store. Hi there, little girl in the candy store. What do you have? Um, make mine chinchilla. Very good. Do you have a penny? Yes, I certainly do. I have many. <laughs> well, I hope you have 300,000 of them, because that's what this little bit of fluff goes for, and it's not even chinchilla. $3,000? Well, honey, you don't want chinchilla anyway. Get something practical. Like terry claw. You know, Donald, that outfit's not so far beyond my reach as you think. Not at the rate I've been going. Oh, yeah? What happened to your rate while I wasn't looking? I did two commercials last month. And this job's good for at least three weeks. And just take a look at this. Very nice. Gingham checks. No, I mean the balance. $219.73. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. You're going to be the best-looking girl there, no matter what you wear. No matter what I wear, where? Well, there's a special occasion coming up. What is it? I'll tell you after lunch. You tell me right now I'll be too excited to eat lunch. All right. The magazine assigned me to a party. I can bring a guest. What kind of party? The International Jet Set. I'm doing a satirical piece. <gasps> oh, Donald, who's going to be there? I told you, I'm going to be there. I mean that I can get excited about Oh, just a minute. You know what I mean. Who? They're gonna be, uh, they're gonna be a lot of rich people, all shapes and sizes. Tall rich people, short rich people, thin rich people. Donald. And a fat king. Did you get excited over a fat king? What country? I don't know, somewhere. What's the party gonna be? At the presidential suite at the Brimsley Plaza. <gasps> now, that's exciting. Oh, I don't have anything to wear. Oh, now, honey, don't, don't worry about that. Now, don't say I'd look marvelous no matter what I'd wear. I won't. I was just going to say, if you have nothing to wear, I'll take Jerry Bauman rather than be embarrassed. That's a very bad joke. That's the best I can do on an empty stomach. All right, all right, let's go. But you should have told me after lunch, I'm going to be too excited to eat. <laughs> Miss Marie, Miss Marie, that buyer from Kansas City bought the cape and the stole and everything else you modeled. Oh, I'm so glad, Mr. Mellinger. I'm tickled to death. Look, personally, I think he would buy anything you put on. It's a shame you're not 12 feet tall. I could sell him the drapes. <laughs> That's very nice of you to say, yeah. Mr. Mellinger. Don't mention it. Since everything has gone so well, do you think I could leave a little early today? You see, I've been invited to a party tonight in the presidential suite at the Brinsley Plaza Hotel. And I just got to go out and get something to wear. Oh, an occasion like this calls for something elegant and understated. You're not kidding. I can't even afford a whisper. <laughs> you may borrow this chinchilla. Oh, Mr. Mellinger. You're not serious. You don't think lending somebody a $3,000 stole his money? <laughs> what if anything ever happened to it? I mean, I'd be terrified. Eh, don't worry your pretty little head. I'm insured. Oh, Mr. Mellinger, 
This is so generous of you. I don't know what to say. If a piece of royalty happens to ask you where you got it, you make a curtsy and say the address. <laughs> okay? Well, of course. That's the least I can do. As a matter of fact, if I ever have to take it off, I'll carry it so that the label shows. <laughs> Better yet, I'll wear it inside out. <laughs> This is the first time I've ever taken out a girl whose clothes are worth more than my car. Tonight, I'm just one of the very elegant people lost among the other elegant people. <laughs> Darling, how are you? Love your stove. Why, thank you. Mind telling me where you got it? Oh, not at all. It's from the House of Mellingers, East 29th Street, second floor loft. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> What was that all about? Well, I promised Mr. Mellinger if anybody asked me where I got my soul, I'd tell them. He gave me those business cards. Why don't you just wear a sandwich boy with flashing lights that says Mellinger's Mellinger's? <laughs> oh, Donald, I promised. Honey, you're a guest. Act like a guest. All right. I'm sorry. I have to go get the guest list. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I'll wait for you right here. All right. Now, have fun. Mingle. Donald, I don't know anybody here. Well, what difference does that make? Well, I don't know how to mingle with strangers. Well, there's nothing to know. Just mingle. All right, I'll mingle. Mingle, mingle. Mingle, mingle, mingle. Mingle, mingle, mingle. Mingle, mingle. <laughs> mingle, 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 mingle. <laughs> Here a mingle, there a mingle. Everywhere a mingle, mingle. Can I interest you in a single mingle? Uh, I didn't think anybody was paying any attention. Well, how can anybody not pay any attention? I mean, you're, you're pretty hard to miss in that thing. This thing happens to be chinchilla. Chinchilla is out. Thank you. Sable is in. Thank you. In fact, fur in general is on its way out. Well, I know a lot of poodles are going to be awfully sorry to hear about that. <laughs> Have you been doing the regular route? I beg your pardon? Well, you know, the Hamptons and Palm Beach and Acapulco and... Oh, well, no. Actually, I've been off on a route of my own, as it were. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course. It's obvious. It is. Mm-hmm. It's sticking out all over you. Mm. Switzerland? That attractive little ski swing in your walk? Huh? And then Spain for a bit? And then Rome? Huh? Yeah. And then Paris? Daddy's yacht? Mummy's Ferrari? How am I doing? Oh, you're positively amazing. Uh, routine. <laughs> yeah. One question, though. How come we never met before? Well, I've never single mingled before. My name is Kavanaugh. Halstead J. Harrington Kavanaugh the third. I, I see. Call me Buzzy for short. Buzzy? Uh, what'll I call you for short? Anne Marie. Uh, for short or for long. Definitely for long. I expect our association to be a very long one. Well, I don't really know about that, Buzzy. Well, I don't wish to argue. I wish to dance. Will you join me? Well, I guess I'd better. You look pretty silly dancing alone. <laughs> you know that's very true. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Donald! I'm sorry I'm late, honey. Gee, we didn't miss you a bit. Uh, Donald, this is Mr. House to J. Harrington Kavanaugh, the third. This is Donald Hollinger. Uh, how do you How do you do? do? Nice how do, you do? Meet you. Buzzy and I were uh, mingling, Donald. Uh, uh, Buzzy? <laughs> oh, that's what everybody calls Mr. Kavanaugh. Oh, <laughs> I, I see, of course. <laughs> how would you like a punch in the nose? Oh, no, no, no offense intended, Mr. Kavanaugh. Call me Buzzy. Are you sure you wouldn't mind? Not at all. Okay, no offense intended, Buzzy. Apology accepted. Fine. Honey, we have to be going. Oh, yes. Well, it certainly was a pleasure meeting you. Even more pleasurable for me. Thank Good night, you. Buzzy. Hollinger. Good night. Good night, Anne. Lunch tomorrow. Lunch tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Shall we say 1.30? Oh, well, well no, I'm, I'm afraid not. How's 2.30? Well, well, no, you see, Donald and I... Aren't married. No, no, we're not married. Engaged? 
Uh, no, no, not what you might call officially engaged, no. Well, then. Uh, look, Buzzy, I, I don't feel it's particularly necessary for us to qualify our relationship for you. You're absolutely right. I was simply trying to determine if it was proper for me to ask Anne to lunch. <laughs> see, Donald, that's all he was trying to do. Yes, I see. Of course I see. Well, then? Uh, well, then, I'm afraid not. You see, I have several previous engagements tomorrow. How about the day after? The, the day after? Well, actually, I don't have my book with me, and I'm just a scatterbrain about times and places. Oh, and I don't, just a scatterbrain about that kind of... Uh, yes, you are just a regular little scatterbrain. <laughs> Why don't I ring you, then? Ring me? Ring you. Why don't I? Donald? Uh, that's entirely up to Anne. Uh, well, then, fine. Why don't you ring me? Gee, I'd love to. <laughs> Good night, Anne. Hollinger? Buzzy? All I'm saying is you want a great deal of help. It's entirely up to Anne. It's entirely up to Anne means it's entirely up to you to say no. Well, how can I say no? You can say no thank you or thank you no or no no a thousand times no. Oh, John, why I felt silly making such a big issue out of just a phone call for heaven's sakes. Besides, I didn't want to embarrass you. How would you figure it would embarrass me? Well, apparently, I mingled so well, he thought I was a member of the group. And one member of the group can't be rude to another member of the group. What group? The group. The crowd. The gang, you know. Switzerland, Spain for a bit. Rome. You know. You, one of the jet set? That's what he thought. You're kidding. I am not kidding. It's just that you never noticed that attractive little ski swing in my hips, did you? Uh, frankly, it never brought skiing to mind. Well, he said it stuck out all over me like a sore thumb. And that, plus the chinchilla, well... Yeah, and you never tried to correct any false impressions, I suppose. I followed your instructions to the letter. I didn't tell him where the stole came from. I acted like a perfect guest, and Buzzy drew his own conclusions. I see. No, you don't see. All I did was have a little fun. No, I take that back. I had a lot of fun, and I thank you for taking me. <laughs> well, honey, look, it's certainly your prerogative to go wherever and with whomever you please. It's just that I'm very selective about my competition. You have no competition. Men like Halstead J. Harrington Cavanaugh III never give up. How do you know? He's the third, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> We'll rest assured that in no time at all, he'll be totally disillusioned. When? When he finds out that I'm not listed in the social register. And that that attractive little ski swing is merely my way of compensating for an old football injury. <laughs> well, here we are. Well, gee, what a quaint little neighborhood. Yes, it has atmosphere. Listen, you deserve credit for being able to rough it. You didn't say whether to wait. No, no, don't wait. 290. Listen, why don't you get changed and we'll go slumming around the neighborhood? Huh? Now, Buzzy, when you said it was urgent for me to have lunch with you, I agreed, providing you brought me right home and we said goodbye. Remember? Uh, yes, I vaguely remember something to that effect. And it really wasn't urgent at all. Well, now wait. That depends on your point of view. 290? Thank you very much, Buzzy. And goodbye. How about lunch again? Later on in the week. How about 290? <laughs> well, have you got change for 100? A hundred dollar bill? You gotta be kidding me. Gee, I'm afraid I don't have anything smaller. <laughs> and can you change a hundred? A hundred? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. I think the most I have is 20. Huh. That I can break. <laughs> 290. Three, four, five, ten, and twenty. Here you go. Hey, thanks. Fuck them. There now. I'm indebted to you. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> oh, don't be silly. I mean, what's two dollars and, and ninety cents plus tip? I mean... Uh huh. It's a great deal. And I intend to take full advantage of the obligation. Make it up to you. Oh. You don't have to do that. Listen, let's just say that the 290 plus tip is my treat, and the difference... The difference is what entitles me to call you again. Patsy, wait a minute. Listen, right now, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm leaving. But I'll be back. You can bet on it.
I just did. $17.10. Less tip. Honey, it was delicious. Oh, Donald, thank you. I want you to know I spent the better part of the afternoon preparing this feast. Well, how did you spend the worst part of the afternoon? Oh, you mean Buzzy. I mean Buzzy. How did lunch go? Well, I mean, how can lunch go? Honey, how did it go? It came and then it went. I told you he wouldn't give up. Uh, Donald, I made it absolutely clear when I accepted his invitation that lunch was emphatically it. That I was definitely not interested. No more dates, no more phone calls. Aren't you going to answer? Answer what? Your phone is ringing. Oh, my answering service will pick it up. You know, I'm getting so used to them just taking all of my calls that I hardly even hear the ring anymore. <laughs> Pass the cookies, please. Oh, yes, of course. More coffee? Uh, no, thank you. Listen, honey, I don't want to tell you how to run your life, but your answering service doesn't seem to be interested and may be important. Yeah. Hello? Oh. Hi there. <laughs> How are you? Oh, yes. Just fine, thank you. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, no. No, no, a thousand times no. Uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't. Well, I don't even know how you can suggest it after your promise. I don't know how I could have any faith in a second promise when you've so totally and completely broken the first one. Absolutely not. No, I'm busy tonight. I'm busy in the morning, too. No, I'm, I'm busy in the afternoon. Ring me? No, really. No, I just... Well, yes, but... All right, fine. Yes. Goodbye. That was Buzzy. No kidding. Oh, Donald, it's just the one he brought me home this afternoon in a taxi. He didn't have change for a $100 bill. So I ended up paying the taxi. And now he just wants to return the money. Over dinner. And I told him that was absolutely out of the question. And he said, this is positively the last time. And I said... I heard what you said. And then he said... I know what he said. So what can I say? <laughs> Donald, tell me what to do. Bend your pinky and keep your elbows off the table. <laughs> oh, anyway, there's Dinky Van Epps. She's looking all over the ship for us. She's looking in, in the pantry. She looked in the kitchen. And there we are in the bilge of the Queen Mary. <laughs> Man, you're not having a good time, are you? Oh, Fuzzy, I wouldn't say that exactly. I would. Exactly. In fact, if I had any sense, I'd take you right home immediately. In fact, that's precisely what I think I'm going to do. Waiter? Oh, wait a minute. There's no rush. Why don't you finish your coffee? Love for another man has insulated you against the Kavanaugh wit and charm. And I refuse to subject my ego to any more bruising. Thank you. Do you have an account here? Me? No. Any mad money? How mad? $68.43. No, I don't think I could get that angry. Don't you have any money? Nothing to speak of. I'll probably come into a few blue chips when my grandfather goes. But... but what about in the meantime? Like tonight? What about the check? Oh, well, I never come here alone. I can't afford it. You mean you expect me to pay that check? Well, I honestly didn't think you'd mind. But, 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 
Easy, I don't have any money. Well, don't get upset. I'll take your check. I'll vouch for you. You don't understand. I don't have any money. Period. But, Ann, if this is your idea of a joke, now I find the whole thing in rather poor taste. A girl can be temporarily out of funds or, or written out of the will or, you know, for the moment to have her allowance cut off. But she never has no money, period. There must be some money in your family somewhere. No, I'm afraid not. My father doesn't have any money, and I don't have any money, and no one I know has any money except you, and you've got my $17.10. Are you telling me, do you actually need that money? I'm telling you I have to pay my rent. But you told me you were rich. You told me I was rich. <laughs> Besides, I thought you were rich, too. Me? I didn't show up at Randolph Cleach's party wearing a chinchilla stole. I just borrowed it. Oh. I can't tell you how embarrassed I am. I mean, I'm not the sort of fellow that would take money from a working girl. You took money from this working girl. Only because I was under the wrong impression. Look, before I do a thing like that, why, I'd borrow money from a bank. <laughs> Gee, I'm terribly sorry. I mean, if there's anything I can ever do to make it up to you. No, 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 Ann. It wasn't your fault. I mean, you had no way of knowing or understanding. Understanding what? Well, the only reason I took the money from you, because I really liked you. <laughs> Why is it all the wrong girls have the money? Hi. Hi. I'm uh, sorry I'm late. Have a seat. Wait a minute. Now, I thought you were going to take me out to lunch. I was, but I only have half an hour, so I'm taking you into lunch. Well, I, I like these intimate, out-of-the-way places. <laughs> Donald. Huh? I have a favor to ask you. Okay. I need to borrow some money. Okay, I can lend you a few dollars. How much do you need? Five, ten? $88.43. $88.43? I need to pay my rent. Well, honey, I don't understand. Just a few days ago, you had over $200 in your bank account. Yeah, I did, but I, I lent it to a friend. Must have been some friend. Well, actually, it wasn't a friend at all. It was Buzzy. Buzzy? Honey, why is that guy always borrowing money from you? Because he doesn't have any of his own. I thought he was rich. Apparently, that was Buzzy the first, not Buzzy the third. Congratulations, Ann. You've just met your first gigolo. And the last. Yeah, I hope you learned a lesson. Yeah. People aren't always what they seem to be, including me. Look, never create false impressions if you're going to single mingle. All right. But don't expect to get your money back too soon. Oh, I'm not worried. It's an excuse to keep you around. <laughs> hey, what was the name of that restaurant you and Buzzy went to? The Stuffed Up? Right. I'm going to make reservations for tonight. But, Donald, that's so expensive, and we're already out $88.53. Listen, any place you can take Buzzy Cavanaugh, I can afford to take you. <laughs>43 cents. Exactly. You're kidding. That was very nice of Buzzy. You mean that was very nice of Puffy? <laughs> Your table is ready, Dr. Hollinger. Uh, thank you. Dr. Hollinger? No, it gets you better service. <laughs> Never create false impressions, Donald. This is dinner, not single mingle. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens if a pregnant lady at the next table suddenly goes into labor? Can't help her. I'm a veterinarian. <laughs>